Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. We are halfway through this 10-game homestand. The Royals are a perfect 5-0, and tonight going for a sweep over the Tigers. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Brian Lefevre. Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery are coming up. And before we go any further, a uh, big kudos to Sam Abramson, our associate producer, who put together the highlight reel of some of the great plays this year defensively. The Royals are really playing like they have a two-game lead in the Central Division, not a 12-game lead. The way it appears, this team has no meaningless games on the schedule. They all mean something, and they're playing their hearts out. Great defense, pitching, and timely hitting. We've seen it all in this homestand. And on a rare night when the Royals hit three home runs, we're talking about the Royals' ability to hold the Tigers to one run with the defense leading the way. Yeah, it's incredible. Like last night's game, anytime a team walks seven batters, half of those are going to score. That's just the way the game is. But when you have airtight defense that really pays attention to the detail, hitting the cutoff men, accurate throws. And speaking of throws, Salvi's one of the best, but I love this. The energy and the glove work. There's no question. You never know from night to night who it's going to be. Look at the legs. 53-plus runs saved by this ball club. It's exciting to watch. Tonight, it's Edinson Volquez pitching for the Royals. He will not pitch to Salvador Perez, who left last night's game early. He is not in the lineup tonight, and Joel and Monty will update us when we come back. Could see in some pain after this swing left the game early he's going to be day-to-day -day wrist injury contusion something that has been lingering the training staff saying for the last month and last night they said was the breaking point it is not believed they said to be a major injury Joel Goldberg back with Royals Hall of Famer Jeff Montgomery the MRI was clean today no surprise that Salvi then says 
I can play today, but he's not going to. Well, he's that kind of player, and I think he's a guy that you want to get ready to play, but you want him to be 100%. You've heard me say this a number of times. In my opinion, he would be the very most difficult single player to replace on this Royals roster. And so while he called into the coaching staff today and asked if he could play, Ned Yost and company said, uh-uh, let's play this one safe. It's better than the alternative, I'll say that, you know. I mean, we can take the time because if we weren't in this situation, Sal, we'd be playing tonight. So, you know, we can take the opportunity to give him a couple days and uh, get that thing feeling better. And, you know, it's valuable to try to keep everybody strong and healthy, you know, going into the stretch. Now they're saying rest and treatment for two to three days before they reevaluate. So Salvi will be a spectator tonight as Edinson Volquez and the Royals and Eddie along with Drew Butera looking for the sweep. First pitch is coming up next. across Missouri so play it forward Missouri lottery and by your Kansas City Chevy dealers visit your local Kansas City area Chevy dealers for great prices on all the new 2015 vehicles the Detroit Tigers are now five games below 500 and they have really had their problems on offense recently in their last 19 games they have scored two runs or fewer in 13 of the last 19 games, including scoring just one run last night. And here's the batting order tonight for the Tigers as they get ready for right-hander Edinson Volquez. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure exactly who they played before they got here because really nobody cares. But look, they're, they're seeing some good pitching here from the Royals. This is a good offense. They're still right at the top of the American League in average. And it won't get any easier tonight, I guarantee, and they know it. Volquez very good here over his last four starts. Royals are 10 and 2 in Volquez 12 home starts this year. So he's been a good luck charm. Going for his 12th win of the season tonight. They all know what kind of stuff he's got. Two and four seam fastball. That two seamer moves. Just like Ventura's did last night. Change up and a curve, all downward moving pitches. Likes to pound the strike zone down. He'll elevate that four seam fastball up for a strikeout when he needs to. And he 
He's really confident with his mechanics at this point in the season. Leadoff single for Anthony Ghost, who's really been struggling lately. And a look at the Royals defensively, presented by Ford. Drew Butera probably going to catch at least two or three days as the Royals are going to let Salvador Perez left hand, left wrist heal. Yep. And you see that smile on Butera? He's happy about that. He gets a chance to get a little rhythm, get some back-to-back -back games going. And it helps his offense. His defense has always been steady. Salvador Perez came out of the game early last night. Had an MRI today on that left wrist and no major problems, just a bone bruise. Tributera was ready to throw. Ghost made a move for second base and then Iglesias pulled the bat back after showing bunt. Ghost is an energy guy. He'll steal. He's got 16 steals. He's been caught eight times. Volquez, he's good at inducing double plays. He's got 13 on the season. Likes to roll him up and pitch that defense. And who wouldn't? Back to Volquez. No outs. A little confusion there as to who he was going to throw to. Yeah. And sometimes that happens. Escobar or Infante weren't exactly sure, and, and there wasn't anybody closing in. So typically in this situation when that happens, you just want to kind of throw one up over the base. Not real hard, but somebody will get to it. But see how no one converged? And he, he doesn't remember exactly who he was working with. Because always the pitcher will turn around before that happens. And he'll point at one of the shortstop or the second baseman, depending on the coverage, who's covering the back. So there was a little bit of a miscommunication there. Royals were delaying on the field as Ned Yost was talking to Bill Duplissi whether they wanted to challenge when Ghost slid past second base. Did Omar Infante tag him? Tough to tell from that angle. Eric Hosmer thought that he did. <laughs> I saw Gerard Dyson smiling in the, in the dugout. So two on and nobody out to Ian Kinsler. Huge defensive game for the Royals last night, taking away just about every scoring opportunity from the Tigers. And now an error by Volquez puts two on with nobody out for Kinsler, who does not have a hit yet in this series. Pitch was supposed to be over the inside part of the plate. One ball, one strike. Well, one of the great things that Volquez has shown this year is he's a, an escape artist. He's really good. He's held his opponents to a, just a 167 batting average with runners in scoring position. That's second best in the AL. He's been solid. And here are those numbers. Our Toyota League leaders for tonight. Wei Yin Chen and Carlos Martinez with lower averages than Volquez. Grounded foul above the Tigers' third base dugout. Johnny Cueto also on the list. Hector Santiago, the Angels, on that list. The Royals will see him on Sunday. The Angels are here for a four game series beginning tomorrow night. Kane makes a play in center. Ghost will go to third, and Iglesias stays at first. That's the first out of the inning, and now runners at the corners.
There's the crew chief, Joe West. He's at second base. Clint Fagan is behind the plate. Kerwin Danley at first base. DJ Rayburn at third. Last night, we thought DJ Rayburn had a pitcher friendly strike zone, especially with pitches down in the strike zone. There are a few head turns from hitters on both sides. Pitches called around the knees and below, and we'll see what Clint Fagan has tonight. Victor Martinez, who had a big series against the Royals in Detroit, is hitless in this series. 0 for 7. And he is 0 for against Edinson Volquez. 0 for 10 with one strikeout. So Volquez is telling himself, all right, here we go again. Let's roll up a pair. Victor's ground into 15. Volquez has induced 13. See if he can get him one pitch, two outs. Change up. One and one. Kane getting behind it. Ghost is going to tag. And the throw will be cut off. So the air leads to a run, and the Tigers lead 1 0 in the first inning. 47 runs driven in for Victor Martinez. Edinson Volquez has pitched five consecutive quality starts. And pitched very well on Friday against the White Sox. And it was a night where he really needed to go deep. Because Kelvin Herrera, Wade Davis, and Ryan Madsen, we found out after the game, were not available. And getting back to those numbers, Volquez with runners in scoring positions, the White, White Sox were 0 for 6 on Friday against Volquez. It is the ability to execute those pitches. Mainly it's the secondary pitches like that one there. Change up, curveball. Similar to what Ventura used last night that was so sharp. Secondary pitches are really big, especially when you can execute them. More fastballs here because he has a good one. Average is 93, but he'll he'll top out at 95, maybe some 96s, but he's really good at keeping them taking some pitches or some speed off and using that defense. Seems like a slower tempo than normal for Volquez. I'm sure that he's in shock. As good as the defense is, that that play back to him didn't result in an out. So he's, he's having to slow down and try to regroup and get it back together. And if he can just get him, hold him right here in this inning, I think Ireland will be happy about that. Iglesias runs, but Martinez strikes out. So the Tigers get an unearned run because of the Volquez air, and they lead 1 0.
last night. Omar Infante and Alex Rios got the night off. Back in there tonight. Salvador Perez is out. Drew Butera will do the catching. The Royals will be facing 22-year-old left-hander Daniel Norris for the first time. He's made seven combined starts for the Blue Jays and the Tigers. This is his third start as a Tiger. Coming over in that big trade, David Price going from the Tigers to the Blue Jays. Daniel Norris at the time was the Blue Jays' number one pitching prospect. Dave Dombrowski had to have him. I mean, when you have a guy like Price, you could shop him to any team and they'll listen. What do you want? But he's a, a, a guy, a good character guy, works hard, got a good leadership qualities, but you know, you got to have stuff to succeed up here. And he's got a fastball slider change in a curve. And there's the curve, and they're going to see a lot of that pitch, believe it. As aggressive as the, as the Royals are. His fastball is going to average about 91, maybe 92. He will touch maybe in a 94 or 95, but he's got some pretty nice secondary pitches. Late swing. Still 0-2 on Escobar. Typically this season when the Royals offense faces guys they haven't seen before they they sometimes struggle against guys like that at least the first time through Try to get an idea of what he's got Hard hit on an 0-2 pitch Kinsler will throw at Escobar The Tigers defensively behind Daniel Norris Collins Ghost Martinez who picked up his 13th outfield assist last night. Castellanos back in the lineup tonight with Iglesias, Kinsler, and Marte on the infield. And James McCann behind the plate. Ben Zobrist with one down. There's a fastball at 94. Zobrist is hitting 385. His first home stand as a Royal. Told you the story when he came to the Royals that he was on his way to college here. Calvary Bible College near Belton. His father had gone there and actually Ben was young when his father was at Calvary. So he spent three years here in Kansas City and saw his first big league game at Coffin Stadium as a four year old. And he remembers getting Bill a uh, beer spilled on him and fireworks after the game. Wow. Martinez will handle it in right field. Two down. What an induction to your first big league game. Yeah. <laughs> well, last night and so often this year, the Royals in the first inning have had two outs with nobody on and still score a run last night it was two Kane singled with two down and Eric Hosmer hit a two run home run off of Anibal Sanchez Kane one of the best in the league against left hand pitching. Lays off the curve, one ball, one strike. So that leads the American League, hitting with two outs. And he's a 362 hitter against lefties. Just got underneath it. Goes back pedals in center field, and Daniel Norris gets the Royals in order in the bottom of the first.
exclusive ticket package that includes priority for every potential postseason game played at Kauffman Stadium this year. And we'll give you some of those details as Edinson Volquez begins the second inning with ball one to Tyler Collins. You can purchase any 10 of the remaining regular season home games, plus make a deposit for season tickets next year, and you'll receive postseason ticket priority. One and one to Collins. So to take advantage of this opportunity, go to Royals.com slash tickets. Well, you remember how it was last year? Everybody was scrambling for a seat. That is a fair ball right on the line. Kind of an afterthought as a swing for Collins. But it pays off. He's at second base with nobody out. Boy, you're going good when you get a line hugger like that one. I saw chalk flying all over that grass. He saw that two seamer is kind of moving away. Actually, it's change up. It stayed up and he just sliced it. Tigers had runners at first and second and nobody out in the first inning and got one run now runner at second nobody out. And Nick Castellanos Tigers regular third baseman who was out of the lineup last night. Just before that pitch there I noticed Collins looking around at the outfield did a good thing with nobody out. He looked around because he knows how good these guys are in the outfield. So he's trying to make a mental picture of where they are now so he can react better when a ball's hit. So that's good. That's showing me he's knows the fundamentals of running at second base. And he knows that there is nobody in left center field. Castellanos drives in Collins and now the Tigers have scored in the first two innings. Yep. He reacted right on contact there. He had a good idea. Good swing. It's out over the middle. Jeffrey Marte has been the primary first baseman with Miguel Cabrera out. And Miguel Cabrera getting closer and closer to returning to the Tigers. There was some talk a week or 10 days ago that he might return in this series. He did cross another hurdle in his rehab from a calf strain. He ran the bases. Here at Coffin Stadium, and that's how he hurt himself in early July. Obviously, when a guy goes down, I mean, a guy, I mean, one of your stars, it gives an opportunity for somebody else. And Marte, in just 45 at bats, he's opened some eyes. He's done the, the most that he can do to impress Osmus with what he's done in replacement of uh, Cabrera. Four doubles, three homers. We'll sit in 290. Inside, two and one. And he's shown some good defensive skills, and also he runs well. So you know, this kid's versatile. I imagine they'll be able to play him just about anywhere. Probably not in the middle, but in the outfield. He is a product of the New York Mets organization. And when he was called up this year by the Tigers, that put an end to seven and a half years in the minor leagues with three different organizations. You know, I, I didn't realize that, but he, he plays with a little chip on his shoulder. He's got some experience and some swagger. He knows this might be his last shot, so he's do, making the most of it. Change up was up. Drew Butera reminding him get that ball down three balls and one strike to Marte Ryan looks like to me you're right on his tempo in the first inning I thought it was the air that slowed him down but man is he really slowing his pace Gonna 
try and bust him in with a fastball on three and one. And it is down and away. So he is not only missing the strike zone, but he is on a few occasions missing his target very badly. And then it's Volquez who told Butera, hey, come on, let's talk about this. Maybe he's asking Butera, what do you see? Oftentimes when a pitcher is pitching to a slow tempo, they're, they just don't feel right. Time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag KCDataStrongFan. You just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile as in tonight's broadcast. That's hashtag KCDataStrongFan. So a run home. And first and second with nobody out to the Tiger catcher James McCann. Hit the outside, strike one. Let's see how well Volquez does here, trying to come close to Butera's target. And he and Butera haven't really been on the same page either. In a few times already and we're just in the second inning where Butera's gone through several signs is trying to get in Volquez mind. What does he want to throw here? So he's going to set up inside. And a ground ball to Moustakis. Out at second. Hard slide. Double play nonetheless. Castellanos goes to third. Two down. There it is. That'll help him. Infante. Nice turn. Getting up out of the way of the legs of Marte. See how he uses the base? He makes the runner slide over the bag. Lots of times coming the throw coming from the third baseman, you're gonna go across the base to get it. But depending on the how hard the ball was hit. Omar, he faked out Marte. 96 for a strike to Ghost. You got to find ways to be creative at second base. When you got guys like the Tigers, they run hard and they break up double plays. You got to get creative out there sometimes. Keep them guessing on which way you're going to go when you're turning two. A swing. And it's 0 and 2 on Ghost. He singled to open the game and scored a run. Late swing. <laughs> nice play by Tiger third base coach Dave Clark on the Ricochet off the netting in front of the third base dugout. <laughs> wow. Crowd appreciated that. Usually you hear that when the Royals make a good play, but the third base coach, the Tigers, way to get in the game. It's contagious. You stand on this grass here and it brings out the best defensively. <laughs> it's one and two. Nice reaction. Struck him out. So again, it could have been a lot worse. Tigers with one in the first, one in the second for a 2 0 lead.
Hosmer, Morales, and Moustakis coming up in the bottom of the second inning. A reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. And two of the three do ups homered in last night's game. Royals hit three home runs in a game for the third time last night. Norris jumps ahead. One ball, two strikes. That pitch was supposed to be up, so Norris got away with one there as Hosmer grounds out to Kinsler. One away to Kendrys Morales. 81 runs driven in. That is third in the league. He has 31 doubles to go with 13 home runs. And that is second in the league. And he has reached base in each of the last 17 games. Meat of the Royals order is hot. And Norris knows it. His secondary pitches, he's, he's bringing those in early in this game. Last year, the Royals got six home runs, 59 RBIs from their designated hitters. That was the tally at the end of the regular season. We have 50 games to go, including tonight and this year. 12 home runs and 80 driven in at the designated hitter position. Mm. That ball's hit very sharply and with three infielders on the left side. It's the shortstop Iglesias. So a couple of hard hit outs for the Royals, but Norris has retired the first five. The Royals would like to invite all local business professionals to Coffin Stadium on Thursday, August 27th for Business Day at the K. The event will feature a pregame presentation by Royals General Manager Dayton Moore, network opportunities and snacks. $10 loaded value can be used for food and beverage throughout the ballpark. And of course, you can watch the Orioles and the Royals later on that Thursday. To participate, you must purchase the special ticket package at Royals.com slash business. Ed Yost was pretty proud of Moose checking in with a long ball last night. Got him a hit, too, to go with it. Multi hit. There it was. He was ahead in the count, but it was a breaking ball, similar to the pitch that he threw Lorenzo Kane that he homered on. Again, trying to pitch up. One and two on Mustakis. The home run put an end to an 0 for 18. Stockus now hitting a 275 curveball just outside two and two. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Change up and Norris gets a strikeout. That's his first. And Norris has opened the game with two perfect innings and has a 2 0 lead.
If you're a Royals fan and looking forward to attend the Kansas City Irish Fest, we'll get your tickets today for Irish Heritage Night here at Kauffman Stadium. That's Wednesday, September 2nd. For 20 bucks, a special ticket package gets you both a game ticket for the Royals and the Tigers and then a single day admission to Irish Fest. Base hit left field for Jose Iglesias. So now the Tigers have a hit to open each of the three innings. This being the first time that Volquez has ever thrown to Butera, that's probably why we're seeing a little bit of a slow motion here. I mean, with a with his rhythm, and so it might take them a little while to get on the same page in uh, in-game situation. Escobar flips to Infante with the glove for a dazzling double play, two down. That'll help that pitch count from Volquez. Steady Eddie. He leaned Escobar right into this ball here. He'll open glove. Infante, it's easy for him to see it as he opened his glove and just shoveled it to him. Nothing fancy. You see how he used the bag again. Watch Infante. He's going to stay on top of the base and turn at that time. Victor Martinez with two outs, nobody on. He drove in the Tigers' run in the first inning with a sacrifice fly. His 47th of the year. He's Spent some time on the disabled list this season. Problems with his left knee early in the year, which he had surgery on during the offseason. Maybe didn't quite strengthen it enough. I don't know. I have I haven't talked to him at this time of the year. I just talked to him earlier in the year and he he was definitely hurting. That's before he went on the DL. So he'll have a, another big offseason of conditioning. Double play is big as that base hit is rather harmless. Martinez is on with two down, and that's his first hit of this series. Man, his first hit off of Volquez. Change up, stayed up and out over the plate. Stiff front leg. Having a stiff front leg like that. Hit against that leverage. You stiffen that up, and keep your hands back, and give you a little more compact stroke. And now JD Martinez, who has homered 30 times this year, Volquez struck him out first time. But against the Royals, no home runs, no RBIs. And he just demolished Royals pitching last year. He had five home runs, 15 RBIs against the Royals last season. It's amazing. A guy that productive. The Royals have been able to stay underneath his bat and above it because he's a great low ball hitter. He's shown that. Power to all fields. Has the ability to lift. Way in on him. Probably not even a strike. Two and one. Martinez really got off to a slow start. It's pretty remarkable that he has 30 home runs. When the Royals faced the Tigers in May, he was really slumping. He was. In the middle of an 0 for 25, but all that turned around in the middle of June. Twenty home runs in about two months. If you go back to the middle of June last year, he has hit 50 home runs. And only Mike Trout and Nelson Cruz have more during that span than J.D. Martinez. Great company to be in. Oh. 
Still two and two. Stockis slides to pick it up and throws a strike to Hosmer. Two good defensive plays in the third inning. First the double play, and then Mustakis on his knees to get JD Martinez. He makes that play in his sleep. You pick up. in 1987 to provide free transportation from her hometown of Lexington, Missouri for patients traveling to Kansas City. The organization has lodged more than 700,000 miles over the years and helped hundreds of patients. In 1998, Betty then founded the annual Sounds of the Heart concert to raise money for school equipment. Alex Rios off the fence in left field. He'll be at second base with nobody out. And just to finish the thought, Betty Weddle sits in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat at tonight's game. Rios. He's able to break up the rhythm of that young lefty, Daniel Norris, who'd been cruising through the first couple of innings. Left some little fastball out over the plate. Optional hitting today on the field for the Royals. That means you know you can hit if you want, hit in the cages, or or just stay in your locker. And he was out working on that swing. He was working on turning and burning and trying to find that home run stroke. Almost got it there. Omar Infante with Rios at second base. Both Rios and Infante got the night off last night. Infante had not had a day off since early June. He'd been a warrior for the Royals lately. And now in his first at bat, Rios doubles. We'll see what Infante does. I had a chance to talk to Omar today about his off day and did it recharge his batteries watching his teammates from there. And he said, yeah, it was really nice of Ned to give him a day off. And I said, well, are you happy with your season this year? And he he said no right away. And I go, whoa, whoa, what do you mean? He said, well, offensively, I'm I'm not hitting up to my capabilities. And I said, yeah, but look what you're doing on the other side of the ball. I said, you've been getting some clutch hits for the team. 
but your defense with Escobar out there has been airtight and you're turning a much better double play. Can you tell me why? And he said, yeah, my arm feels strong. The bone chips that he had in his elbow in spring training have to be removed at the end of the season, he said. But it only hurt him in spring because he was just getting going again. And, and there's chips that are floating around in there. But he said, my elbow and my shoulder are strong. Kinsler calls for it. One down. Rios holds at second base. As summer comes to a close, so do summer fireworks. So don't miss your last chance to see the final fireworks show this season. That's Friday with the Royals and the Angels. It's also Buck Night. You'll enjoy dollar hot dogs and peanuts. And then the fireworks spectacular with your family and friends. Tickets at Royals.com. Angels here for a four game series beginning tomorrow night. Drew Butera with Rios at second base, one out. Hey. So much for that average fastball at 91. I've been seeing nothing but 93s, 4s, and 5s from this kid. He's pumping it up and he's putting it where he wants it. Big curve, nice slider. We are talking about the Kauffman Stadium radar gun. Some say it's a little hot. Can't prove it. But that comes up from time to time. Not bad for a young guy who's only made seven big league starts and able to hold it together with runners in scoring position. And that will keep Rios at second base. Iglesias throws out Butera two down. See this Escobar will try and drive in Rios with two down. Vote for the Royals Player of the Month at rallyhouse.com and you'll be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. Escobar down 0 and 2 in the first inning, grounded sharply to the second baseman Kinsler. Look at that pitch. Was that a cutter or a hard slider? Like a hard slider. Nasty. Eskies had a tough season against the Tigers, hitting just 216. One and one. Eski handling lefties pretty good, pretty well. 290 average, six doubles. Hasn't home and off a lefty this year. He just has a couple of homers. Both of those were on first swing, first pitches of the game. First at bat. Two and one. With a backdoor slider this time. And now Escobar ahead three and one. Daniel Norris was the Toronto Blue Jays' second round pick in 2011 out of high school. Made his big league debut last year. Staying either on the corners or near the corners. And now three and two on Escobar. 
No wonder Escobar gave a wow as he looked into the dugout of the Royals. He might have been saying wow because he didn't think it was a strike either. Got a slider up this time, and that is to the gap. And Escobar wants three. He's got three, and now the ball goes out of play, and Escobar will score to tie the game. Amazing how this game is. Daniel Norris has been cruising. These pitches have been everywhere but down the middle of the plate. He's been hitting his spots. And Escobar with a good at bat. He worked the count. Worked it three and two. And there's the mistake. Short compact swing right over the middle. That's what hitters wait for. And he got it. Cookie down the middle. And with his speed, he's able to get an extra run with that aggressiveness. Dobris grounds it out to Kinsler, and that is the inning. Now, Cetus has a little time to get a drink of water and catch his breath. With two outs and nobody on. How many times has that happened this year? Two outs and nobody on, and the Royals get two to tie the game. Seattle, Gerardo Parra is going to fly out, and it is a no-hitter for Hisashi Iwakuma. He throws the no-no for Seattle, fifth in franchise history. And now Kane in front of the track to make the play. Thank you for that, Joel. One down in the top of the fourth inning. Royals get more runs with two outs, and I said two outs and nobody on. Actually, the Royals got two runs with... Two outs and one on. But you knew what I meant, right, Monty? Yeah, I just know they got two runs. That's yeah, all it that's counts. Right. And that's all that cares with Eddie, too. He's like, all right, well, I got a new game. Back in this ball game. And again, the Royals scoring runs with two outs. Two outs and runners in scoring position. And really turning that inning around. I mean, a leadoff double from Rios. Both Infante and Butera do not move him to the next base. Escobar looked like he was just fighting to stay alive at the plate, and he finally got a pitch out over the middle of the plate and hits the triple. And with his hustle, the Royals turned it into two runs. Create a run. Speed will do that. Nick Castellanos 
drove in the Tigers second run in the second inning. It looked like Volquez and Butera were not on the same page. It's not a bad thing. They're working together for the first time, but Volquez was shaking off a lot of pitches in the first two, and that has not been the case in the last two innings. And Ryan, one thing that a pitcher likes to have is rhythm, and it was difficult for Edinson Volquez to establish that rhythm. Once you get it, it seems like you're able to keep it going, but sometimes it's hard to get it out of the gate, especially for starting pitchers. Now, Edinson Volquez has not been that guy who's had difficulty getting out of the gate and establishing his rhythm early in games this year, but tonight it seemed like that was the case. I think that air had something to do with it as well. In the first inning, very, very second hit of the game. Great location. And that's all Castellanos could do. Watch it. Bend backward, take a 180 turn, and head back to the bench. Oh. Couldn't have painted it with a paintbrush any better than that, Monty. Picasso. Ooh. Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Who would have predicted this? I mean, the Royals were happy to get it, Edinson Volquez. Much of the league yawned at that move, but he is the Royals' leader and win starts, innings pitch, strikeouts, quality starts. He's has five consecutive quality starts coming into tonight. And he's been the most stable and the most consistent starter of the year. Yeah, he was a very nice addition. Obviously, he lost 200 plus innings when James Shields signed elsewhere, but Edna Volguez came in and picked up where he left off with the Pirates last year. We have talked so often about players the Royals didn't expect much from this year who have had great years and then the guys they were expecting to play well Volquez we talked about Kendry's Morales and the upgrade he's been a DH compared to last year. So the Royals they in their minds they figured there was more from Volquez there was more from Morales and many other teams felt like if anything there was less right. I think one thing that hasn't really been talked a lot about is the fact that the Royals have established this record with a lot of injuries this year. They had three out of their five opening day, you know, starting pitchers on the disabled list at one point. They lost uh, Vargas for the season. So, I mean, they've, they've really fought through a lot of injuries. And I think the fact they have this lead now hopefully will allow them to get healthy and going into the stretch there the last month or so of the season, they can get everybody healthy and, and, and be strong going in the postseason. Old foul off to the third base side. Hey, the park rangers here. <laughs> Maybe he's been here and the moose is loose. Moose is in the house. There he is. And the park ranger is off duty, so he can have an adult beverage. If he desires so. To your point, Monty, with the injuries, when Alex Gordon went down, I think most people felt like the Royals would be okay. They would miss Alex Gordon and they can't wait for him to get back. But at the same time, and on the topic of injuries, there you go. You know, the Royals are 19 and 11. Since Alex went down. So, you know, I, I think it was reasonable for the Royals to be 500, maybe a little over 500 with Alex being out, but they are eight games above 500. Guys like Paulo Orlando, Gerard Dyson picking up the slack. And one way they've won a lot of games this year is just by having the depth in that lineup top to bottom. And, you know, occasionally guys get high. We've seen Mustakas and, you know, early in the season. Now we're seeing Hosmer and Kane. Uh, it seems like Morales has been pretty much there the entire season, but somebody picks it up and it just extends that lineup. And if you lose an Alex Gordon for, you know, six, eight weeks, you don't miss him nearly as much as if it's that one guy that you have. Detroit needs a sporting goods store that sells cups. Remember Jose Iglesias when we were in Detroit last week? Yeah, yeah it was uh, really a couple tough shots off the bat. Now you, you get those that bounce but Iglesias he fouled it directly off the pitch. And 
came to find out he was not wearing a protective cup. Also come to find out that he was a rather talented soprano. <laughs> the Royals tie the game in the bottom of the third. And Edmondson Volquez says thank you very much and responds with his first one, two, three inning. Order online with rapid pickup at delivery.panerabread.com. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Dodge, find your summer of performance with great deals at the Dodge Summer Clearance event. Tied at two before we get to the bottom of the fourth. Let's go back to Joel. All right, Ryan Lorenzo came coming up, and last night he got the Gatorade bucket. We'll show you that in a second. He wasn't expecting it because Salvador Perez signaled to Lorenzo and I, I'm not coming out there tonight. Then when he came back, they were staring at him. And Lorenzo was looking at him. He's our Honda most trusted player of the game because he did the deke and he had Lorenzo's attention. And now Lorenzo has everyone else's attention, Ryan, and more. And he will hold with a double. Well, Joel, just to finish your point in a very loving way, I think Lorenzo has learned that for the most part, he cannot trust Salvador Perez. No, that's and he let his guard down for just a moment last night. Yeah, that's his good buddy. And he told me, I hate to get drenched after the game, but he always finds a way. He said on a scale of one to 10, for creativity, I give it a 10. He was very clever. I never saw it coming at all. But he said, hey, tip your cap to Salvador, who mixed it up last night, and credit to Drew Butera with the big time fake out. Second straight inning, the Royals have a leadoff double against Daniel Norris. And it looked like a wasted double last inning. It was Rios who doubled, and then with two down, he was still at second base, and that's when Escobar hit the triple. The Aaron throw to third allowed Escobar to score and tie the game. Hosmer grounded out to second his first time up. 0 oh 2. Money, I'm impressed with Norris's secondary pitches. He's got a good sharp slider. He's got a slow hook, but it's got good bite to it down. And there's his changeup, and he's not afraid to use that pitch against lefties. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I saw the first inning. You could tell that he's got stuff. Mm -hmm. Just nicked it foul.
Eric Cosmer in his somewhat short career has been a more productive hitter in the second half. And he has taken that to another level this year, hitting over 400 since the All Star break. And maybe disappointed that he wasn't on the All Star team and making the rest of the league pay for that. Kane takes off for third. He is safe. Able to stay on the bag. Excellent jump. Had a couple of pitches to read when he threw him to Hosmer, and he got a good step. He was walking into that one. McCann, perfect throw. Kane just beat it. And an excellent pitch to throw on. That ball was up and away. And Moving McCann right towards third base. He did nothing wrong. Taking a little chance with the left handed batter to play, but he felt good by getting that good jump. Ah, he's convicted. Yeah, steal a base like that, you know you're going to make it. Perfect throw, couldn't get him. Tigers took a quick look at that, wondered if Kane's left hand came off the bag. And did Castellanos tag him? They will not challenge. Kane is third in the league with those 21 stolen bases. And now Hosmer hammers it to left field. Collins is back and it's off the wall. The Royals take the lead. And for Eric Hosmer, he has an RBI in six consecutive games. You make a mistake up to him with with him being able to close that shoulder and control that front stride like he's done so well this year. Hosmer is dangerous. Watch where this pitch is. Okay, it's an elevated fastball right in his wheelhouse. He loves that pitch there. He's controlling this foot. That foot's been really the key for Hosmer. We're waiting until the ball travels late and going with that good level swing. Put a hole in the left center field wall on the line. Tight to Kendry's Morales. That's the pitch right there. In order for Norris to have success in this league, he's going to have to do more of the righties. That inside fastball, it's important to get those guys off of the off of that uh, off of those secondary pitches that he executes. Right. If you're going to make a living with those off pitches, you have to pitch inside with effect to make sure that the hitter is not going to you know, take that outside part of the play away from you. I think it's interesting. So, Obviously Norris has very good stuff. If you look at the scoreboard Royals have the lead. They've got four hits all extra base hits and that's a, a result of being pitches up in the strikes and making mistakes. So give them some credit. I mean normally against a pitcher like this and, and maybe Norris is a little more firm than the lefties we've been talking about. That ball hit very hard to center field. Ghost will make the play and Hosmer had made a move toward third so he had to go back to tag and at that point it was too late and maybe against those other left hand pitchers the Royals were too anxious and helped the pitcher out and they're not doing that tonight they are being more patient against Norris yep part of the game I'm sure that McCann and Norris talked about Matt Boyd and, and the other lefty on their team that's that, that had some effect in in Detroit against the Royals by using high fastballs and changeups. But this kid Norris looks like he has crisper stuff than Boyd. He, he so he's trying to find himself now. And credit Ryan, like you said, credit the hitters. They're not missing those mistakes. They're they're up, but, but they're not fouling them off. They're making him pay. Norris has one strikeout, and that was Mustakis on a changeup in the second inning. Hard slider for strike one. Morales would have gotten underneath that last ball he hit. That would have been all the way to the wall. So Haas, you know, he, he he had to read that. It's the reason why he didn't come over on the tag. He thought it was going over his head. Nice stop by McCann. That keeps Hosmer at second base.
65 runs driven in for Eric Hosmer. He has seven more RBIs right now than he did all of last year. Two and one to Moustakis. Two and two. Norris will get a strike called in this, but this is not where you want to live if you're a pitcher up in that strike zone. It's about where Hosmer's pitch was. Yep. Full count. Rios is next. He didn't pay attention to Lorenzo Kane earlier in this inning, and Kane, after a double, stole third. Well, he saw Hosmer rip third off last night, so he, he's Hosmer's got their attention. And Mustakis works a walk. The first allowed by Daniel Norris. And out comes pitching coach Jeff Jones. You can get closer to the action at Coffin Stadium with the Royals Memories Program. Choose amongst a variety of on the field opportunities, including playing catch in the outfield, taking in summer fireworks on the field. And many more. All experiences are available for purchase each game exclusively through the MLB.com ballpark app. Only seven starts this year, but numbers will tell you that this is where he's most vulnerable. And then third time through, he makes the adjustment. Alex Rios doubled and scored last inning. That was leading off the inning, and now bats with Hosmer at second and Mustakis at first. Up and away, ball one. One of the things I noticed about Norris early in the game, he came out and displayed all of his weapons. He didn't hold anything back. He wasn't trying to work off that fastball changeup. He showed everything. So maybe that's. A part of the reason why hitters have more success second time too, they've already had a chance to see everything he offers the first time out. Two balls, no strikes. They're getting to him, and I'll tell you how they're getting to him is those few mistakes he's made, they've squared those balls up, and, and he's he's now mentally saying, oh man, I can't make a mistake. And so it looks like how he's pitching in this inning here. And he's really slowed his pace down. Yep. Like he's very unsure of himself. Three balls, no strikes. And they're working in the Tiger bullpen. Kyle Ryan. Another lefty working for the Tigers. Back to back walks and that'll load the bases with one out. He 
You know, HUD, you talk a lot about body language. And we just got a little glimpse of Daniel Norris. Brian McCann, or James McCann, after that walk, went out in front of home plate and yelled something to Norris. And he, I thought he really had a very confident look on his face. Like, yeah, I know. I'm good. I know what I need to do here. And a backdoor slider for strike one. And Fonte is hitless in his last 17 at bats. 0 for 1 tonight. But he is at his best with the bases loaded. 324 in his career and 4 out of 7 this year. I know that pitcher really has to control his body language because hitters really feed off of that. They watch every move of that pitcher. And if he shows any sign of insecurity or oh I don't know indecision he he's in trouble. That'll get at least one run home as Ghost makes the play. Hosmer tags and scores. Mustakas goes to third. And Fonte drives in a run. And now the Royals have back to back two run innings and lead 4-2. Fonte, he's looking for something out of the plate like the rest of the hitters in the inning, and he got it and didn't miss it. Drove, drove it to the deep part of the K, was able to move Moose over to third base. Now they have another chance. Keep the line moving. First and third to Drew Butera. Butera grounded to short first time up. He has more home runs this year against the Tigers than any other team. <laughs> Again, pitching inside, ball one. One and one. If you weren't with us earlier in the broadcast, Salvador Perez is okay. He has a bone bruise on his left wrist. He has been taking foul balls off that wrist. He has had a few back swings hit the wrist. He had an MRI, nothing serious, but the Royals are going to hold him out for two, three games at least to give Butera some playing time. McCann, I think, lost track of the count. It is one and two on Butera. So Salvi's wondering what's going on as McCann got that last pitch. Looked like he was headed for the third base dugout. <laughs> Salvi knows that feeling. Doesn't happen very often. Norris doesn't look very comfortable throwing the ball over to first base. No, he doesn't. Okay, last night this didn't help his wrist either. McCann coming home, trying to get over the tag is what he was trying to do with his leg, and he caught Salvi in the left wrist. And that kind of act activated it again and, and aggravated it. Way outside and a delayed steal by Alex Rios. One, two, three shuffles and a turn and go. He's eight for eight and steals. Got the corner, so that time it is strike three. Royals get two more 
Tigers had a 2-0 lead at the end of two, and now the Royals with two in the third and two more in the fourth. Albert Pujols and the Angels will be here tomorrow night. Four game series through Sunday. Tomorrow and Friday right here on Fox Sports Kansas City. We'll also see a good buddy Johnny Giavitella. MLB on Fox Sports one will resume this week with a double header. Which will include the Royals and the Angels. Angels a game and a half back of the Astros in the West. So Fox Sports one. For the 6-10 game on Saturday, Joe Davis will have the play-by-play. -play. Royals Hall of Famer Mark Gubiza will join the broadcast along with Ken Rosenthal. And then back here on Fox Sports Kansas City on Sunday. Don't you know Johnny Giovatella has had this date coming up marked on his calendar. He's excited to come back to the game as a starting second baseman. James McCann, Anthony Ghost, Jose Iglesias in the fifth inning. Edson Volquez pitching with the lead for the first time. out one away over the last two years when the Pirates or the Royals score four runs for Edinson Volquez that is a guaranteed win since the beginning of last year his teams are 25 and 0 in his starts when given four or more runs of support he is 20 and 0 personally and here the Royals have four runs in the top of the fifth inning that is the best record I'm sure that goes without saying of any pitcher for his team over the last two years. Anthony Ghost bunts foul. One reason he's able to be in this situation tonight is pitching very effectively in the first and second inning to get out and limit the damage. One of the things that Norris was not able to do in the third and fourth inning. But I think that's just a sign of maturity and a sign of a pitcher who's been there and understands what he needs to do. Get that big ground ball. Do something to get yourself out of that inning. That is pulled foul. Yeah, good point, Monty. Both the first and second innings could have been a lot worse for Edson Volquez. And he was able to roll up a couple of double plays that really saved him, helped him keep the pitch count down. He's now at an even 60 with one down in the fifth inning. One and two on Ghosts. One for two with a run score. The Tigers. 
are struggling as a team and they have several hitters that are struggling individually. Anthony goes their leadoff man has scored three runs in the last 25 games three. Zobris doesn't quite get there in time and it's still one and two on ghosts. Now Zobrist is not Alex Gordon. Okay, we know that. But he's going to give you effort. There's no question. And he'll get to it. most balls he gets to, he'll make the play, but he's giving him all he's got. There aren't many Alex Gordons out there. I can only think of one. Yeah. Look at this. Oh. Mikey Stockis. Nice play going into foul territory. Two down. Dave Holtzman has done some exhaustive research, and his research says that there is only one Alex Gordon out there. <laughs> we know that. He, I'm just trying to stick up for Zobrist. It is interesting, though, that both Gordon and Zobris learned to play the outfield at the major league level. Mm -hmm. There you go, Monty. Players to watch from DraftKings.com, Edinson Volquez on that list. Go to DraftKings.com, enter the promo code BROYAL to play daily fantasy baseball for free. Apparently there is an author of su supernatural books named Alex Gordon. It is a female Alex Gordon. We're checking to see how many gold gloves she has. Three up three down. Volquez has retired the last seven. Royals with a 4-2 lead and now third time to the order against Daniel Norris. Escobar Zobris came coming up. Now, Cetus Escobar became the Royals' leadoff man. Lorenzo Kane became the Royals' number three hitter. Nori Aoki, who had been leading off, batted second. And Ned Yost, who had been waiting all year for the Royals' offense to take off, the Royals down around the bottom and run scored at the very bottom in home runs. And the Royals had lost the first two games of a series with the Boston Red Sox. They were 
watching their playoff dreams fade away and Ned Yost said you know what it's just not going to happen with power like we thought so let's emphasize speed and this team really took on its identity from that point forward without a doubt it worked and now look what these guys have become confident they know what they can do change the whole complex of the hitting order and then they need a little bit of power and here comes Morales by the way the game before that one Kane hit eighth and Escobar hit ninth so it's not like Kane was a middle of the order guy before that but Ned Yost in his gut felt like that was the move to put Kane in the number three position Escobar took off Kane took off Aoki proved to be a better number two hitter than leadoff hitter he had been leading off all season I think that move shocked everyone about as much as Ned shocked everybody by putting Mike Moustakas at the top of the lineup hitting second coming out of spring training this year. Good recovery by Anthony Ghost. He broke back on the ball hit by Escobar and makes a play for out number one. And I wonder if Ned at that particular time knew that Lorenzo Kane was going to be a, the potential to be a guy, you know, to be a to be a, a middle of the order type of hitter. And I think he's he's going to have better seasons in that three hole. But but this year Lorenzo Kane has come out from the very beginning and has established that he's a solid number three guy. And so many guys have really grown into their power this year. Lorenzo Kane has and Salvador Perez has grown into his power. Putting up more impressive numbers every year. I felt like from that point forward, the Royals really started to use their running game more effectively. The Royals, for most of last year, they led the league in stolen bases, but it, it felt like to me they just had more stolen bases than anyone else. It wasn't like they were scaring teams with their speed, but from that point forward, they did. And they stole at least, well, they had. On average one stolen base per game the rest of that year. And it really seemed like opposing teams were really on the defense when men were on base. Well and they would push the envelope. They, they would steal second base. I remember the one game and I think they scored two runs and didn't hit a ball in the infield guys from second base score. I think Gore scored a run and Dyson scored a run mm -hmm. and they didn't hit a ball maybe past the pitcher. So they, they really did take advantage of those opportunities to use their speed. Third walk allowed by Norris. And now one on one out, middle of the order coming up. Well, the Royals really didn't have a leadoff hitter in 2012 and 13. You know, Ned was trying to find it. Alex Gordon was there for a little while. And little did he realize that he just made a couple of brilliant moves that turned the whole offensive complex around. And Alcides Escobar had been really chewing on Ned's ear. Leading up to that point, he wants to lead off. Kane going for it all. And when Ned reflects on making that change and leading off Escobar, Escobar saw the lineup card and went to Ned and said, This is not going to be a one game thing. I mean, it was the opportunity that he had been waiting for to lead off. He doesn't walk a lot. We know that he doesn't have a very high on base percentage that you'd like to see from your typical leadoff hitter. But that's where he wanted to hit. And here's what we're talking about. A little half swing. Put the ball in play. Use your speed. It's a second hit for Lorenzo Kane. And there's nothing Norris and the Tigers can do about that. No, and Daniel Norris, by the way, is, is, is as good an athlete as you're going to find. As a young pitcher coming in, this guy really feels his position well. And you could tell by the way he bounced off that mound, he wanted to make the play there. But there's no way the ball bounced and took a kick to the left there. You see, as it hit to the line, that, that's what got Lorenzo Cain that base hit. And those plays on the third baseline more difficult for a left handed pitcher to start with. Yeah, because their momentum, most lefties, they fall. Different way down that third base line, but that, that, that messed him up there. It was the bounce that got it. Brad Osmus out to get Daniel Norris. Or is he? Wow. Kyle Ryan went to the gate and they opened the gate out in right field. He left the mound. He was ready to come on the field and 
This will make a 22 year old rookie feel pretty good. A, a three time gold glove manager known for his ability as a catcher, much more as a hitter in his long big league career, goes out there and the rookie talks himself into the game, into staying in the game. I gotta get my eraser out. Daniel Norris, HUD, you and I both read the story. He's a very unique young man, avid outdoorsman, travels the country and sometimes outside of the country in his 1978 VW van, which he lives in during spring training. Brad Osmus gives the 22 year old a little boost of confidence and Daniel Norris pays his manager back with a ground ball double play to end the game for the inning. Visit thoroughbredford.com. That young man right there celebrating his 38th birthday. We're happy that he's enjoying it here at the K. Jeremy Jones, thanks for coming. Hoping you're enjoying this game and on your 38th birthday. Way to go, bud. Jeremy was a former number one draft choice by the Texas Rangers. Yeah, he's a, he was a big league ball player. He runs BC building champions. Ian Kinsler, Victor Martinez, and JD Martinez. Here in the top of the sixth inning. Kinsler is flying to center and grounded into a double play. Off the end of the bat, Moustakis throwing on the run. Hosmer stretches into foul territory, and Kinsler is out. That's a great play on both ends. The degree of difficulty for Moose was high. Kinsler runs well, and whenever a hitter smells that hit, he really wants to get down that line. So Moose really has to alter his throw and get a good throw off of that right leg. And Hosmer, though, coming across the bag, ducking the runner in the throw. I mean, that you just kind of open your glove and hope it lands in there. He caught that one from memory. Oh, you know, because that's close to the hitter and I mean the, the base runner. Great play. 
such outstanding concentration. Victor Martinez had a sack fly in the first inning and singled in the third. To Hosmer, he'll backhand and take it himself. And that's nine straight outs for Volquez going back to the third inning. Follow live Royals baseball with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet, which allows you to stay connected to the Royals all season wherever you are with the MLB.tv game of the day. In game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, and more. It's the number one app for live baseball. And now JD Martinez. Volquez was shaky, to say the least, in the first three innings. But held the Tigers to one run in the first, one in the second. A double play really helped him out in the third. And the last man to reach against Volquez was Victor Martinez back in the third inning. He got an amazing turnaround because Norris came out, shuts down the Royals the first two innings, six up, six down, and Volquez didn't look sharp, didn't look like he had the rhythm, and it's almost been a, a 180 for both pitchers since then. Appears that Volquez and Butera are more in sync since the first two innings of the game. Get that really nice life on that fastball. Almost like Ventura last night, less a little bit of velocity. Yep. Two and two. Ventura with a Big assist from his defense. Pitched six scoreless innings last night. Was able to get around six walks. Only gave up two hits. Full count on J.D. Martinez. Tyler Collins is on deck. The key last night for Ventura, even though he did have the six walks, only gave up two base hits. So as a result, only eight base runners on the night. Martinez strikes out. Volquez has retired 10 straight. And to this point, that is six consecutive quality starts for Edinson Volquez. Steady Eddie.
captain tonight is Steve McBee from Shawnee. That has a nice little ring to it, doesn't it? Steve McBee from Shawnee. And if the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Steve, I'm sorry. Not that you won't be grateful for $100. But last night, Kathleen Johnson from KCMO won $2,300. The Royals hit two home runs in the Sonic Slam inning. The first one was worth $2,200 on the Lorenzo Kane home run. Just another 450 foot bomb. And then the Mike Moustakas home run worth another 100 bucks. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park in this inning, Steve McBee from Shawnee, which still sounds good, will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Well, Daniel Norris appeared to be on his way to the showers with two on one out in the fifth inning. Brad Osmus stayed with him. And he got a ground ball double play from Eric Hosmer, and now he's got a fresh inning. I'm glad he came back out because I want to hear you guys finish your discussion about the unique individual. Well, he was a second round pick of the Blue Jays in 2011, and he used part of his bonus to buy a VW van, which he has named Shaggy. After the Scooby Doo character. Remember the dream machine? Oh, yeah. Scooby Doo. So here's Shaggy and Daniel Norris when the season's over he loads up his VW van which has a solar panel on it and he drives around the country. He is an avid surfer so he stays near beaches oceans lakes whenever he can and in spring training and we showed you at the very top Dunedin Florida. That's where the Blue Jays had spring training. He lived in his van. And as the story goes, he found a great spot near a beach in Dunedin this year. And people had complained because you can't park there overnight. So the police came to shoo him out and realized he was a major league pitcher who could afford much more than that, but that's just his lifestyle. He lives on $800 a month. That's what his financial advisor sends him. And so they gave him directions to a, a nearby Walmart. And so he sleeps in his van during spring training. And now he'll be doing it in Lakeland, Florida. But he would sleep in his van at a Walmart, drive his VW bus to spring training, change his clothes, make a pot of coffee, and then go to work. Oh, uh, you know, he's a character, there's no doubt. And he's very confident in who he is. I like the fact that he said he's actually more comfortable being kind of poor. He says because not having money maintains his lifestyle and limits the temptation to conform. This guy, he's a thinker. He's also a left-hander. <laughs> right. Exactly. Funny, but you know, one of his quotes that I read too, I love it. It's his, his philosophy is be kind, be courteous, Love others and be happy. It's that simple. I think this young man gets it. Well, that stuff he's got, he looks like he won't be poor for much longer, will he, Monty? I would think not. If he can, uh, if he can have a long career as a left-handed pitcher in the big leagues, he's going to be just fine. And I guarantee a guy like that won't forget his roots. Ghosts. Sprints into right center field to get Alex Rios. So given another inning, Norris comes through three up, three down. We played six, and the Royals lead four two.
U-verse high-speed internet. The U-verse revolves around you. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. By your Midwest Ford dealers, visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. Edinson Volquez with a 4-2 lead. That is his 78th pitch beginning the seventh inning, so he should have plenty left in the tank. Given up two runs. One was unearned because of his error back in the first inning. And he's retired the last 10 Tigers. Make it 11 in a row as Tyler Collins grounds out. One down, let's go to Joel. Well, Ryan, good news on Wade Davis through a bullpen today. Said he felt free and easy. Thought he could get back. Maybe as soon as today, certainly soon. And Nebio said, well, be careful about this. Probably not today, but very good news. And they'll be patient with Wade Davis. Now, Wade and a lot of the Royals had a chance to meet some folks that were here with the Save a Warrior program. And it's a program that helps out veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress. And Wade's wife, Caitlin, went and sat with a lot of these guys yesterday in the third inning and she was so touched by it this was really amazing guys she said I i'm gonna leave for a little bit i've got a surprise when i come back and she left and they didn't know this she went to the team store ordered 27 wade davis jerseys that they had to rush and get the name and number on the back put down her credit card and went back and made sure every single one of those guys from the save a warrior program had themselves a wade davis jersey great moment for a lot of guys that were here to enjoy a baseball game. Well, I'll tell you, it's not the first time that Caitlin Davis has been generous. Remember, she famously during the World Series as a tip after having breakfast in Kansas City left her server World Series tickets for free. Find out more about treating PTSD. Save a warrior. And guys, you remember earlier this season there was a cohort here in Kansas City for these Warriors and they were able to come out to a game earlier this season so this is actually the second one that they've been able to uh, take part in and, and enjoy and last night when I was going out to near the Royals Hall of Fame to do the post game show I saw a whole bunch of Wade Davis jerseys and I wondered exactly what it was and and Joel just explained I saw some of the guys and I understood then that that was a very special gesture mm. ready to go well that's that's got to be the true meaning of a waiter. Check, please. Yes. Way to go. That's 12 straight. Knocked down by Edinson Volquez. Yeah, really nice change up here. Going to see way out in front. Ramani, the arm angle that that's coming out of, too, provides a little bit more depth on his sink. He gets a little bit more action going down. Yeah, you want to you want to try to replicate as much as you can from your fastball arm slot, your arm speed, everything about it to really sell that pitch. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. He's he's getting away with something by doing that, right? You always hear about guys dropping their arm when they throw a changeup, and the ball flattens out and it stays up. So he's kind of going against what you're taught to do. I mean it clearly works for him. That ball flattened out on Mike Moustakis and he guns it over to first base. To finish out the Tigers in the seventh inning. So make it 13 in a row. Retired by Volquez. Go ahead. Put on a clinic. Look at that howitzer. That's a cannon.
get a strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag KC Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Courtney looks a lot like Jeff Montgomery. Maybe it's just me. Monty, how about you? I don't remember the last time I had a tie on. That was earlier in the year. <laughs> you, were, you were hanging with the people. Joe and I get a lot of great people out at our set. Oh, we've been seeing it. They're excited. They got their signs. Oh, that's fun. Omar Infante has a sack fly and a pop out to second base. But you know, going back to my conversation with Omar today, I said, Omar, are you okay with your contributions and what you're doing? I said, you're playing championship style defense on a championship caliber team. Does that make you feel good? And he smiled. You know, he doesn't, he, he doesn't have a lot of words. He just smiled, and he agreed with me. But when he first came out and told me that he wasn't happy with his with his year, that kind of startled me. I thought he'd be okay with his defense, but he's, like a lot of players, they want to hit. I know when the trade was made for Ben Zobers, a lot of people talking about maybe having him play regularly at second base, but I guess my take as a pitcher, maybe that's a little biased. I love the defense. I especially... Love when you have a shortstop and second baseman have worked so well together over the last couple of seasons. Would really hate to see him break that up. Oh man, that's chemistry, and it's good chemistry. You want your middle guys to be comfortable with each other, and you know that's a large part of the game is at the middle of the diamond. Yep. Hit in the center field for Drew Butera. And now the Royals begin their fourth time through the order, and I don't know if Daniel Norris can talk his way to staying into the game this time. Two innings ago with two on and one out, Brad Osmus came out fully prepared to remove Norris from the game, but Norris convinced him to stay on. He got Eric Hosmer to ground into a double play and then pitch a scoreless sixth. And now he is out after 96 pitches. Neftali Feliz is a Chevy call to the bullpen. Is out. Neftali Feliz is in. Here is the exchange. Give me the ball, son. <laughs> Wanted to get a handshake first. I like it, you know. I don't know if I've ever seen that one. Yeah, you know, he reached out with his with his right hand, you know. I mean, he thought Brad wanted to shake his hand. <laughs> Now 
Neftali Feliz. Pitches for the second time in this series. Two-thirds scoreless with a couple of strikeouts last night coming into the middle of an inning. Usually, Monty, when the manager comes out in a situation like that, he's there to take you out of the game. When, when, when they took you out, ever did you ever shake the manager's hand? I always give him the baseball. Because that's what he's coming for, isn't it? Very likely. Now, Cetus Escobar has one of the biggest hits, if not the biggest hit, for the Royals tonight. RBI triple, and then on the same play, scored on a throwing error by the shortstop Iglesias. It was very early in the game, our Ram drive of the game, and this was after a leadoff double and no advance by the next two hitters. So Rios at second base, Daniel Norris was pitching well. Escobar got the mistake, he drove in a run. Forced a throwing error that tied the game, and the momentum has been on the Royal side ever since. And that swing that Escobar took, I think, was one of the best swings of the year. I mean, we've seen some good ones from Escobar. I mean, that one double he hit with the bases loaded here at the K after he fouled off about eight or ten pitches was exciting. But this one here, watch him, he's so short, he recognizes the mistake, just sets his foot down, and he comes down through the ball. That's a beautiful stroke. He's got a nice chop in the wood, and he's going to get some backspin on contact with that good angle. And he attacked it, and, and he recognized it was a mistake, and he got it. That ignited the team. J.D. Martinez will make the play on Escobar. Two outs. Neftali Feliz just trying to find his way. After being released by the Rangers, he was their closer when they went to the World Series in back-to-back -back years. His ERA is just under seven and a half. That's with the Rangers and the Tigers combined. Ben Zobrist with Butera at first base, two down. Neftali yeah, has got a good fastball. He tries to sink it, curveball and a change. Zobris has almost identical stances from the right side to the left side. He was telling me yesterday that he points that elbow back to the backstop and that helps him get to the ball quicker with his hands. He said last season he he had that elbow down around his ribs and he he, he was looping and, and popping up a lot of balls. So he he, he really over exaggerated that elbow pointed right back to the screen. He says all related to my hands. He's a little more pronounced with his chin on his shoulder from the left side. From the right side, he doesn't tuck it like he does there as much. But very similar stances. Castellanos will take care of it on the left side. We have played seven. Royals lead 4-2.
Jays lose again for the fifth straight time. The Blue Jays win again 10 straight. They are now in first place over New York. Texas getting crushed. And L.A. right now trailing the White Sox 2-1. to one. Our Mazda game break takes us to Target Field. And they took target practice off of Nick Martinez. Miguel Sano, upper tank, one of three home runs allowed by Martinez. And the Twins blasting the Rangers 11-1. to one. Ryan? Wow. He's something. Miguel Sano. Mm, that's some extreme pop to go in the upper tank there. Boulevard Royals live coming up after the game with Joel and Monty. Edinson Volquez is attempting to go eight innings for the second time this year and the first time since his first start back on April the 9th. This is just his 86th pitch, so we can have a quick inning here. He's got a very good shot of going all nine. He has set down the last 13 Tigers hitters. McCann off Mustaka's glove and I think Escobar was there for a play. So McCann is on with a single and that's the first runner for the Tigers since the third inning. Well Volquez is doing a lot of things right especially first pitch strikes 18 to 27. He, he's really getting in there getting ahead of hitters and executing down in the zone. This is a trademark for Volquez. Really works that lower half of the zone with all his pitches working down that two seam fastball has some really good movement away to lefties into righties. Anthony Ghost bats against Volquez for the fourth time. He opened the game with a single to center field. Scored the Tigers' first run. The Tigers added another run in the second inning. A 2 0 lead, and the Royals scored two in the third and two in the fourth. First, excuse me, first couple innings. As you see Herrera getting loose, it looked like Volquez and Butera were having a hard time getting on the same page. But obviously, the success that Volquez has had in the middle innings has been great. And obviously, these guys are, are hitting it off. Three and oh. Volquez has only one walk, and that was back in the second inning. Last night it was Volquez and Cueto watching Ventura. Now it's Cueto and Ventura watching Volquez. Two on, nobody out. The Forever Royal Fan Express will be making a stop in Lawrence in three days. Fans across the Midwest, thanks to the Royals and Fox Sports Kansas City, have a unique way of coming to Coffin Stadium. Go to Royals.com slash Fan Express for more information. Volquez just as that conference was going on he turned around and he pointed to Alcides Escobar reminding Escobar that that's the guy he's going to throw to if he gets a ground ball and with the hitter coming up right here Jose Iglesias back in the first inning there was some confusion and what could have been a ground ball double play resulted in no outs and led to a Tigers run. Royals think that Iglesias may bunt. Corner infielders on the grass. He is not bunting and he takes ball one. Communication is important in all aspects of life. And out here on the baseball field where there's no verbal communication on the diamond out there, you got to be aware, you got to be looking, 
The infielders Escobar he's talking to Infante. They're all looking at each other and they're making body language signs to each other letting everybody know what they're doing without saying a word. Got to communicate. Iglesias has only three sack bunts all year. Swinging and he nubs it up the third base side and that ball will stay fair and load the bases with nobody out and the middle of the order coming up. Yep. I've never known a hitter that got a hit like this that was upset. I mean you can't place it any better. They say they all even out you know the line drives you hit at the guy and he catches it. That's it right there. That's the one that makes it even. So Ian Kinsler. Victor Martinez J.D. Martinez. Lining up. Bases loaded nobody out Royals by two in the eighth inning. First time Volquez has been in any kind of trouble since the third. Hold foul. McCann reached with an infield single. Ghost walked. Iglesias reached with an infield single. So Volquez is hardly struggling in this inning. It's a fair ball and it will tie the game. And now second and third with nobody out. So boy has this game turned around. And here comes Ned Yost to get Edinson Volquez. Ian Kinsler. Drives in McCann and Ghost. Kelvin Herrera is a Chevy call to the bullpen. The Tigers have tied the game and they have runners at second and third and nobody out. Orlando, by the way, took over defensively in left field when the inning began. 
A ground ball from James McCann. And Mike Moustakis went into a dive with Alcides Escobar right behind him on a ball that was not hit all that hard. That got the Tigers started. Then the walk to Ghost. And then another infield single by Jose Iglesias loaded the bases. And then Ian Kinsler with a solid double up the left field line to tie the game. And the Tigers had gone the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh innings without a single runner. Now have runners at second and third and nobody out. It's amazing how the game can change at times. And Volquez, he didn't see that one coming. Nobody out. Ned's going to have his defense halfway. When you see a manager play his defense like that, when they're back, it gives them a little extra range in the infield. Victor Martinez with the Glacius at third, Kinsler at second. Jumps on the first pitch, not very deep. Kane makes the play. Iglesias is not tagging. And his momentum takes him all the way to the infield dirt. Lorenzo Kane makes a good play on Victor Martinez. Oh, he really had to change all of his gears on this one. We rarely see him go to fourth gear, but he had to here. And that's a long run, and he knew the infielders were in halfway, and so it was his all the way. Good play. And now J.D. Martinez. Infield comes in a few more steps. Fastball right by him at 101. And then they all know he's got to change up at 90. See if he can help Edison Volquez get out of this one. Ground ball to Escobar, and he was thinking about home plate before the ball went into his glove, and the Tigers take the lead. Contact play was on. Iglesias came to the plate, and I think Escobar wanted a shot at him. Yeah, and now Ned, he brought the guys all the way in on the grass, and Escobar, I'll tell you, maybe his feet got tangled. Going to call it a base hit and an RBI for J.D. Martinez, his first RBI all year against the Royals, and this is the 13th game between the two teams. First and third one out, Tyler Collins is at the plate. Collins is finally facing somebody, he's telling himself. All right, I know I'm going to get some fastballs here because the Royals have really thrown a lot of secondary pitches to him in this series. And he's got some pop, and he loves the heater, and he's going to get some here. Grounds it to Hosmer. He'll come to the plate. Didn't get him. Tigers lead by two. And still only one out. Kinsler on contact got a perfect jump. Good slide too. late. Slid on his left knee and that allowed his right foot to get in there before the tag. A four run eighth inning. There's only been one hard hit ball. McCann infield single ghost walk Iglesias infield single and then Kinsler with a solid two run double. Martinez 
with a chopper off of Escobar's glove and then a ground ball to first. Scores a run. One and one to Castellanos. He drove in a run back in the second inning with a single. In the first seven innings, the Detroit Tigers had seven base runners. Seven base runners. In seven innings, none in the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh. And now they have six base runners in this inning. So this came out of nowhere, if you're looking at it from a Royals point of view. And that's thumbed into right field. That'll drop in front of Rios. J.D. Martinez holds it third. Castellanos has a second hit and the ninth man will come up in the inning for the Tigers. Everything's contagious in baseball. You hear that because it's the truth and that's what they're doing. They're just feeding off of the momentum they got going here. Martinez, JD Martinez at second, Collins at second, Andrew Romine will run for Nick Castellanos. And the ninth batter in the inning, Jeffrey Marte. And he takes 99 miles an hour across the thighs. That'll make you flinch. Chris Young. Warms up in the Royals bullpen. He has not pitched since July 28th. One and one. Two balls, one strike. Two and two. There are times when we will say about a pitcher, well, he pitched better than his line. Meaning the line score may look like that he got knocked all around the block when it really wasn't that bad. But that really applies tonight. Edinson Volquez will be charged with six runs in seven innings. And that includes at one point retiring 13 in a row. Herrera gets the second out with a strikeout. His first of the game. Yep, he powered up. Marte, he didn't want to go. But he's got to. All of this started with a harmless looking ground ball to the left side of the infield by James McCann. Edinson Volquez was at 85 pitches after seven innings and we were talking about you know if he had a quick eighth inning he'd probably go into the ninth. And a little roller a diving attempt by Moustakis it went off of his glove. And who knew that was the beginning of a four run inning. I thought Volquez he dealt. You're right about that, the, the numbers.
And we'll talk about that as next start. I think it's next start comes up in Cincinnati. One and one on McCann. Well, this is a huge game for the Tigers on offense. Their offense has really slumped recently, and we were telling you at the beginning of the game, in their last 19 games, they have scored two runs or fewer in 13 of those 19 games. And in this series, Royals have won the first two shutting out the Tigers in game one and holding them to one run last night and now they have six tonight four in this inning one and two on McCann Off the Royals dugout roof. Everyone a little concerned at the moment is a Young fan was hit by that foul ball, but it appears that she's all right. Just maybe scared more than anything else. Hmm. James McCann was concerned. Belvin Herrera was concerned. And see Brad Osmus applauding in the Tiger dugout and. Tributera, like any good catcher, recognizing if his pitcher's mind is elsewhere, so he called for time and went out to chat with Herrera. So we're all glad to see that that little girl appears, appears to be okay. And eventually, her mom put her down, and they both walked up the stairs together. So dangerous. McCann strikes out. The Tigers have a big inning. Could have been bigger. They bat 10. And they take a two run lead. But the Royals, who are the best in the league at answering, have the three, four, five hitters coming up in the bottom of the eighth.
catcher. He won three gold gloves in his playing career. And as a manager, he will go out and catch his pitchers. He really wants to get a feel for a pitcher's strength and weaknesses from a catcher's point of view, not from an observer's point of view. Andrew Romine stays in the game at third base. He ran for Castellanos in the Tigers' four-run eighth inning. I remember when Tony Pena was here as Royals manager, he would do the same thing. He would want to go out there and catch his pitchers. Alex Avila is now at first base for Jeffrey Marte. Yeah, those guys that caught for a living, that's, a, that's an extra bonus. If they can go out there and catch their pitchers and see what they got firsthand. But I can't remember too many managers coming out warming up the pitcher in between innings. Ed, former catcher, but I don't think he gets behind the plate very <laughs> often. Feliz stays on for the eighth inning. Kane, Hosmer, Morales coming up. Royals down by two for the second time tonight. Lorenzo doubled, leading off the fourth and scored. And then had an infield single in the fifth, two for three. And now batting at 319. One and two. Royals number three and four hitters among major league rankings this year. Third best batting average. Most runs scored. Because of some speed, they have the third most stolen bases. Still one and two. Please, steady diet of a fastball. And I think that looks like a slider to me instead of a curve. It doesn't have a huge break to it. He's got an occasional changeup. It's all on him. have had a knack all year and really the last three seasons at this point of the game when the opponent ties the game or takes the lead answering in the next half inning inside two balls two strikes and one of the reasons that they're 28 come from behind wins this year second most in the American League is because of that and, and that's a characteristic that Ned has instilled in his team and they've, they're taken off it. it tells me they never give up they never quit they keep coming back and they believe they can win every game they're behind and boy did they frustrate the White Sox over the weekend in that category nice play by a fan down on the lower level White Sox seem to be chasing the Royals all weekend and as soon as they would catch up the Royals would run away again <laughs> three one one run victories. Kane staying alive, two and two. Feliz came on with one on one out last inning and got Escobar and Zobrist. on in the middle of the inning last night in the sixth and got a couple of strikeouts. We'll try and pitch him inside. And it's ball three. Hey, Lorenzo Kane's battling here. He's milking it. That's that's a couple inside fastballs that were hard by Feliz that he was able to eyeball. Now he wants that same one right down the middle. Ninth pitch coming. Anywhere from eight to ten pitches you see in a plate appearance. That's really good. Another foul ball. Put a little wrinkle on that one. That's a smart pitch. Slider out over the middle. He's doing a pretty good job, though, of keeping it out of the middle. I don't want to 
walk Lorenzo Cain with nobody outs here, so Lorenzo Cain can expect a, another one over the middle. Once again, trying to come inside, and Cain helped him out, maybe with ball four, but it was too close, and it's just foul. So you don't see this very often either. The hitter running back to the home plate after running down the line. Lorenzo Cain says, you know what? I'm going to keep my groove going. I'm going to get right back in that batter's box. This will be the 11th pitch of the at-bat. Up the middle, and Iglesias is there. So a long battle. Feliz wins. One out in the eighth inning. And here comes Brad Osmus with Eric Hosmer coming up. And Blaine Hardy, like Eric Hosmer, a Royals farmhand at one time, will come on with one out, nobody on. Royals down by two in the eighth inning. Cosmer, they spent the first four years of their minor league careers together. Back to Hardy. He throws it harder to first than he did to the plate. And there are two down in the eighth. He had a catcher over there and a Vila, so he could handle that. Yeah, he did. And now Hardy will stay on to face Kendry's Morales. Mike Moustakis on deck, so Hardy at least will face the next two hitters. Ball one to Morales. Plenty of reason for optimism. You're hoping the Royals can come back as the Tigers have really struggled pitching out of the bullpen this year. With the second highest bullpen ERA in the American League. In this series, the bullpen, Tiger bullpen, has only allowed two runs. Two and one on Kendry's Morales. Hardy 86 to 90 with the fastball. He's not overpowering, but he's putting it in the right spots. 
is a 91 slider. Curve and a change. Three and two, Mike Moustakis is on deck. Another ground ball. This is the second baseman, Kinsler. So the Tiger bullpen gets the job done in the bottom of the eighth inning with three ground ball outs to the ninth. Detroit by two. Here are tonight's sprint cuts of the game against Edinson Volquez. Early on, the Tigers got to him. It was them who got on the board first with a run, and then one in the second. First time that the battery mates have worked together, Butera and Volquez. But once they got out of that second inning, they settled down and he cruised. I mean, his pitches were executed perfectly. Using that defense, he induced two ground ball double plays. He looked good. All of a sudden, the wheels fell off in the eighth inning. Look at the location of those pitches. No wonder he got a standing O when he left. And now Young, who is not pitched in over two weeks. Last time was July 28th in Cleveland when he was pitching as a starter. Bunted. And Hosmer could have caught that barehanded. Anthony Ghost is out. Chris Young then lost his spot in the starting rotation when Johnny Cueto joined the Royals. The Royals decided to stick with Jeremy Guthrie in the rotation and just haven't had an opportunity to get him into a game since then. Johnny Cueto opened this series with a shutout. In his home debut as a Royal. Ball one to Jose Iglesias. So Chris Young just go out there, pitch to contact, just like he got goes to pop up that little bunt there. I mean, just stay down in there the best you can. Timing's always something. Now he's not overpowering, but he's he has the ability to get those guys out with that fastball. Might top out at 88, 89. He's got a slider that's very effective. Some occasional change ups. There's the slider. Glacius looking out at Young as if to say, What was that? <laughs> 
Another pop up to Hosmer. That'll be in foul territory. Two outs. So he got the slider again. Good placement by Young. Bruce Rondone is getting ready for the bottom of the ninth inning. The Royals have Moustakis, Rios, and Infante. Good pitch at the knees to Ian Kinsler. He drove in two in the Tigers' four run eighth inning. The Royals took a 4 2 lead into the eighth inning. Edinson Volquez had retired 13 in a row. Off the end of the bat and a little bloop into center field and a two hit game for Kinsler. And this game at least up here in the booth felt like it was over. Just a matter of Volquez getting through the eighth. If he could get through the eighth quickly perhaps could pitch the ninth. The Tigers were just flat on offense. And they scored four in the eighth and now they're three outs away on defense from Avoiding a sweep. It's how baseball can be sometimes. Royals, they're hot. They've won one five in a row and seven straight here at the K. The fans, they felt the same way. Thinking, all right, we're cruising in this one. One one on Victor Martinez. He has an RBI with a sack fly tonight. Well, I got a kick out of Victor Martinez's quote after last night's game in the newspaper. He said they have a great defense everywhere. If you hit the ball in the air, then you better hit it out of the park because those guys there, they're going to run everything down. She love it when the opponents say that stuff. One ball, one strike. I'm sure Victor's had several base hits taken away by Royals infielders and outfielders, so he wasn't afraid to go out and make that comment. Kinsler has had some big. Stolen base seasons. He has eight this year, but he has a couple of 30 30 seasons in his career, at least 30 home runs and 30 stolen bases. Two and one. Kinsler, he's a winner. Solid. Every day you know what you're getting from him. Now Kinsler runs and Martinez pounds it into the right field corner. And the Tigers are going to get another run. Victor Martinez with his second RBI. He doubles in Kinsler and it is 7-4. Fastball up. That's and that's right where he likes to get outs. But Victor, he had, had an idea that was coming. He stayed on top. He was able to keep it in. If he if the ball bounces over, Kinsler doesn't score. JD Martinez finally drove in a run against the Royals. In the eighth inning with an infield single or at least a ground ball off of Escobar's glove. He drove in 15 against the Royals last year and he has won this year. 
One and one. Blocked by Butera. Two balls, one strike. Back to Young. Inning over. The Tigers have scored five runs in the last two innings, and the Royals need at least three against Rondon in the bottom of the ninth. Seven four, and we'll get Bruce Rondon, who has pitched in just 16 and two thirds innings. He has only allowed one home run and has struck out 25. Moustakis 0 for 2 with a walk. Rondone, he's got an above average fastball, that's for sure. He'll go 95 to 100. Slider, good off speed pitch, too. That slider's really good, and he mixes in some change ups. How about the Ranger rally cap? Yeah, I like it. The Royals had the lead 4 2. Going into the eighth. The Royals have won 111 straight games. With a lead after seventh inning. That goes back to the early May of last year. Right off the mask of the home plate umpire Clint Fagan. Ooh, man. Stunned him more than anything else. Oh, no doubt. That's a shock. The Royal streak of 111 straight wins with a lead after the seventh inning is the longest since the Yankees won 115 in a row in 1998 and 1999. The Royals have not lost a game with a lead after seven innings since May 5th of last year. Now, it doesn't mean they didn't allow any runs. Some of those games, the opponents tied the game after seven innings, but the Royals eventually won the game. 
That's incredible. That's a, one heck of a run. It's the longest streak in 16 years in the big leagues. Two balls and one strike on Moustakis. Well, Rondon two years ago made his big league debut against the Royals and took a blown save. He is a childhood friend of Salvador Perez. They are both from Valencia, Venezuela. Played Little League together. Rondon gets Moustakis. Boy, I thought the Royals were, were going to get some justice with all the little squibbers they've allowed for base hits tonight with Moustakis reaching, but Rondon bouncing off the mound and throwing him out. 6'3, 275. This, this guy, man, he's a good athlete. He jumped right over there on it. I thought Moose had him in a swinging bunt hit. Showing some athleticism. One down to Alex Rios. Another crowd tonight of over 30,000. It has thinned out some as several school districts around Kansas City are back in session, so the kids need to get home. But 30,732, and we can start saying on a school night. In the middle of the week. That is 16 consecutive home games where the Royals have drawn at least 30,000. They have played 58 home games this year, and in 43 of the 58 home games, the Royals have had at least 30,000. Mm, where to go, fans? Players love it. Two and one to Rios. Rondon is the guy that they had envisioned to be their closer when they got him a few years ago, but he's had elbow surgery. And I'd be surprised if you see him at the back end of their bullpen on a regular basis. He's got he's got the pitches that it takes. Ooh. Now well, it's painful, but it's a start. Fifty ninth Royal that's been hit this year. If you got to get hit, that's not a bad place to get hit. And a good time for Omar Infante to bust out. He is 0 for his last 18. Mike Moustakis last night was 0 for his last 18. And he put an end to that with a two run home run. Infante has driven in a run tonight with a sack fly. Down and in, ball one. It's a good fastball hitter. He'd like one down the middle. Rondon got Moose out on a changeup. Probably saves that pitch for lefties. It's a good slider. Monte lays off a tough pitch. Tigers have had all kinds of bullpen problems the past two years and more this year. But don't tell the Royals that. The Royals have seen the best of the Tigers bullpen. 4.25 overall. That's second worst in the American League, but against the Royals, very good.
three and one with the tying run on deck. A hit batter and a walk with one out and now the Royals have a chance. And Rondon is fired up and pitching with a lot of negative emotion. And Jeff Jones a pitching coach more than anything else is going to go out there and try and calm him down. Yep he's a, a bull he loves to pitch he's a big fellow that has the goods to be a closer but you know it's really difficult to shut down games in the opponent's ballpark Monty can tell you that still got a lot to learn in that role tribute tear up will be filling in for Salvador Perez Sal has a bone bruise on his left wrist Sal is or drew rather one for three with a single. Drew likes a good fastball like most hitters, but I don't know if he likes it at 100, 101. If this guy can bring it. And at 100 miles an hour, 0 and 1. Pitcher throws the ball that velocity, the hitter, you barely can see it. Maybe two ticks. Off the clock on a second. I mean, thousand one, thousand two, bang, it's on you. You don't have time to react. This was really hard to hit. At the major league level, Bruce Rondon has two saves. So he has the arm, he doesn't have the experience. Three fastballs, all 100 miles an hour or faster. Two down. Here it comes, folks. There you go. Cetus Escobar with two on, two out. Eski had a big hit for the Royals, an RBI triple, and then scored on the same play when the Tigers threw the ball into the crowd. He is one for four. Taking all the way, wanted to look at a fastball. Escobar has faced Rondon once, and he's single. Talk it over. <laughs> Tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Ryan Lefevre, Rex Hudler with. Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery, producer Joe Libero, director Steve Kurtenbach, associate producers Al Broughton, Sam Abramson, Dave Holtzman, and the producer of Royals Live is Brian Shapiro. Two on, two out. One ball, one strike. With one out, Rios was hit by a pitch, and Fonte walked, and now there are two down. This will be the 20th pitch of the inning for Rondon.
Hit into right field. J.D. Martinez is back. And the Tigers avoid the sweep. So the Royals win the series two games to one. And it's the Tigers rallying late with four runs in the eighth inning, one more in the ninth. And the final score tonight is 7-4. We'll be right back.